God, Dave, he's, he's so strong. He's going to win this thing. This is going to be number seven. I'm never going to win this. I didn't do the right kind of training. Wow, wow, wow. I just want to quit. Quick question, Mark. Um, I'm super uh, fascinated by your writing and your uh, description of sort of your spiritual experiences. Um, you know, when you talk about shamanism, when you talk about um, Don Jose Matsua, these kinds of things. Maybe could you tell us maybe about that last reference, what, what that meant, what that means to you, what is that about? And for the context of those who, who don't know, what, what is that story? Well, in 1989, um, there, with Dave and I, we were running side by side and, uh, you know, we were, we were each trying to kind of figure out, trying to soften the other one up and see if there was a way to break. And it just didn't seem like there was. And so around the half marathon point, Dave started to um, build into a pace that was about a six minute pace. And it started to blow my mind, like, this is way too fast to be running out here. You know, there's still 13 miles to go. And then he kind of backed off and I thought, thank God. And then he started to build back into it and he didn't back off. And I was like, holy shit, he's going to run a six minute pace now for like the next 10 or 12 miles. And then my mind went totally berserk, like with all those thoughts that don't help you out, you know, like, ah, Dave, he's, he's so strong. He's going to win this thing. This is going to be number seven. I'm never going to win this. I didn't do the right kind of training. Wow, wow, wow. I just want to quit. Of course, none of that was helping me out, right? And so I was just trying to stay with him as long as I could because I knew if he got, you know, even a second on me, that could be the break that would, that would break open the race for good. And, and it got so difficult to just match his pace because we were side by side on the Queen Ka'ahu Manu Highway, bumping into each other, this huge highway, bumping into each other because neither of us wanted to give the other one an inch. And it got so hard to match his pace that, that my mind just went quiet. I couldn't even hold on to the negative thoughts anymore. And in that instant when my mind went quiet, the most amazing thing happened. And to describe it, two days before the race, I was flipping through a magazine that was in my condo that I was renting in, and there was an advertisement in it for a workshop that was going to take place in Mexico that was going to be led by two shamans or medicine men. One was a 110-year-old Huichol shaman, Don Jose Matsua, and the other was his adopted grandson, Brant Secunda. And there were photos of them, and they, they both had this look on their face that was just very peaceful but powerful, you know, and if you are looking for like the ultimate space to be racing from, it's when you have that sense of sort of peace yet power at the same time, you know, you're, you're calm, you're steady, but at the same time you can feel this strength just growing in you the longer the race goes. And that's what, that's what I was, had been searching for and I could never find in Kona. Other races I could have it. I could be calm and I could feel that my strength in Kona, I might feel strong, but I wasn't confident. Or I might feel confidence, but my energy is going. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't pull it all together. So anyway, back in the race, Dave surges. He's holding this pace. My mind goes quiet. And in the instant my mind went quiet, it's like there was Don Jose, that 110-year-old Weechel shaman. And he, it's like he was just right there, right next to me. And I could just feel that sense of peace and power that was in that photo of him, in that magazine. And it felt like... I was just gaining this life force. This energy was just streaming into my body. I mean, this is the middle of the Ironman World Championship, and I'm having this vision of a 110-year-old Weechel Indian that I'd seen in, in the magazine, right? And I just got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And, um, you know, I knew that I could do it. But at the same time, my legs and feet hurt so much, I didn't know if I could take another step. So now I started having this battle with myself. I know I can win it, but I don't know if I can take another step. I know I can win, but I don't know if I can take another step. You know, just because you know you can, you still have to. Um, and so, you know, I ended up making that break eventually and went back to the condo, was looking for the magazine because it was like, oh my God, who was that? You know, and Anyway, short version, I ended up going down to Mexico and taking part in, in that workshop uh, with Brant Secunda um, a little while after that. And it was such a transformation for me because I felt like 
all of the all of the racing that I did uh, up to that point in my career <clears throat> had been sort of like if I can achieve this result, then I'm going to feel good about my life. And when I was down there in Mexico, I realized I have it all backwards. If you feel good about life, then you can achieve amazing things. <clears throat> and so that, that really was a, a pivoting point for me, meeting Brandt, starting to study with him, learning these simple practices of connecting with nature as a way to feel good. You know, as crazy as it sounds, we need to, feel, we need to practice feeling good, feeling happy, feeling connected to life. And, you know, think about it from your own experience. Maybe you're in your office and you're working and you're stressed and things aren't going the way you want and you just go, ah, screw it. And you go outside and you just go for a walk. The second you open that door and you see the sunlight and you feel the air and you move your body, you just feel this, you know, you know your problem is still there. You're going to have to deal with it when you get back. But at least in that moment, you have a shift. And so all of the ceremonies and everything that Brandt teaches gives you, get, was giving me that sense. And so more and more and more in the races when things were starting to go wacko and crazy and I didn't, didn't know how I was going to pull off a victory, I could go to that place of calm and power and sense of no matter how this turns out, my life is going to be okay. The sun's going to rise tomorrow. My family and friends are still going to love me. I will be able to give everything I have here and to be able to look back and go, you did the best that you possibly could. And that is precious. When you get to the point in a race where you are locked in and you know that no matter how fast or slow you're going, you are giving the best that you have to give, that is empowering because it puts you in a space of, just knowing that you can do that when you need to. Maybe a semi segue on, on, on what you were just talking about spirituality and, and, and just being comfortable and at ease with yourself. Uh, there's been recently a lot more attention on mental health and specifically mental health in the athletic community. Um, are you comfortable with sharing some of your own experiences um, around this topic throughout your journey? Yeah, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of athletes who have had amazing results in their competitions and they're not happy. You know, so a, a fast race, a personal best, a, a win, a victory, a world record, a title, none of that is going to solve every, everything about your inner character that you're needing to change over your lifetime. It can be a piece just like everything else. It can be a big piece, but at the same time, it's not going to solve every problem that you have and it will not fundamentally change you in every situation that you're going to come across in your life. Yes, it can give you confidence, but at the same time, you will then have a thousand more tests in your lifetime to see if you can get back to that place of confidence in your work, in your relationships, in whatever it is, you know, and so... Um, and this sort of brings up, I guess, the topic of sports psychology, like, you know, if, if you're purely addressing um, some aspect of your mental outlook when you're in a race, maybe you have a fear and it comes up in the race and you got to deal with it. And so you come up with these mantras that you're going to tell yourself to overcome, quench that fear. Well, Ultimately, where is that fear coming from in the first place? It's not coming from the race. It's coming from something that maybe did or didn't happen to you last week or last year or when you were a kid. You know, maybe you didn't feel nurtured. You didn't feel acknowledged. You felt like no matter what you did, you weren't going to be good enough. And so then you're in the race and this fear of, of oh, my God, if I don't win, you know, my, my life is going to be terrible and I won't be worthy and nobody will see the worth of what I am, who I am as a human being. And so if you're just addressing the, the fear in the race, that's just the, that's just the very first layer. But if you go way down in deep underneath and go, where is this, where did this very first start and try to resolve that, then this won't even show up. It will have, you may have that fear come up in a race, but it will not affect you. And that's, so that was really what I tried to do um, throughout my career and, and also a lot of what I did with Brant and was sort of looking at the bigger picture of where, where my fears and doubts came from and um, just sort of healing those things so that when I'm in a race, 
fear, those fears will still come up, but it's like, huh, yeah, so, you know, that kind of a thing, instead of like, <gasps> and, and Mark, you, you constantly were, it sounds like from what I've read that you've written, especially in uh, 1989, the story, you were constantly chasing a specific way of like, you thought to beat Dave, you had to do certain things. But then what was that turning point? Because there was a turning point where you said, okay, I'm looking at this in the wrong way. And you sort of reshifted the, the you reframed the situation and, and your challenge to a point where you could actually start winning. And what was that turning point? Or what was that? Uh, how would you articulate that? Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't know what um, Andrew was referring, 1989thestory.com is a series of um, articles that both Dave and I wrote together about our whole journey throughout the year leading into that classic battle that we had. And then, of course, the, the final chapter in that 1989thestory.com is of our race and, and how what was going on for both of us in it. Um, but the, the big shift for me was that prior to 1989, I was trying to win the race. And finally, in, in the winter of 89, I, I thought, you know what? I could have the best race of my life and get second or third or fifth. And so trying to win is great. And if I win, I will certainly take it. However, that's a, it's something that's out of my control. Somebody else just might have a better day than me. And so if I get second and have my best race, am I like the first loser? You know? And so... In 89, I thought, my goal this year is to get myself in the best shape I can so that I can have the fastest swim and bike and run that I can possibly have. And then, however, that adds up in the big picture of the other competitors, that's fine. And it was, it, it, somehow it took, it took some of the pressure off. Like, you know what? It doesn't matter to me what Dave does. He, he's going to have the race he's going to have, you know, and for sure I will use him as a, like a, a carrot to draw the best out of me. Um, but at the same time, I know that I will be able to cross that line happy and fulfilled no matter where I finish if I've had my best race. I coach athletes all over the world, only age groupers. I love age group athletes, markallencoaching.com. All of my training is online. It has all of, the, all of the knowledge that I've gained in almost 40 years in the sport and over 25 years of coaching athletes all over the world. Athletes of all ability levels, ages, target race distances. I love it. There's a lot of interaction. I am your coach at markallencoaching.com. You don't get shuttled off to uh, somebody else. You have interaction with me. Hope to see you on there, markallencoaching.com. And there's a special for you guys only. You can get the first month for $1. The discount code is first month one. First month one. Just for you. MarkAllenCoaching.com.